Hi, my name is Andrew Novicki, and I'm part of the engineering team here at Interval Zero. Today, I'm going to show a short video explaining the uses of application debugging of a multi-threaded real-time application using Visual Studio and RTX 2012. This situation will look familiar to a lot of you in a debugging environment for real-time code. The user interface will be debugged on the x86 hardware by Visual Studio and the real-time code will, be, will use a proprietary IDE and they will communicate via PCI. This can cause challenges as it is somewhat complex communication and you deal with multiple IDEs which is difficult to manage. Using RTX, we can debug both the user interface and the real-time code in Visual Studio on shared memory. I've created a simple program to display the features of debugging RTX applications in Visual Studio. We have a dual core PC that has a u the user interface on the Windows core and a real-time application on the RTX core. In the real-time application, my program will create a thread known as thread A and it will print out A followed by a number. It will also create thread B, which is B followed by a number, and it will create a hello world thread, which prints out hello world. These threads will run in parallel and print out simultaneously. However, using Visual Studio Debugger, we can freeze the threads and debug each individually. In today's example, we'll start already attached to the process in a Visual Studio debugging environment. I will show how you can freeze and thaw threads and many Visual Studio debugging features that are supported by RTX, including memory, registers, the call stack, and a parallel stack, which shows call stacks for multiple threads at the same time. I'll also show how you can use watch windows to fix minor bugs in, in programs, and I have included a bug that we, I, I show how we fix it using these watch windows. Also. I will show how hardware breakpoints can be used to pause the code to notice if bugs are happening. So let's get started. So here we've loaded our program, ThreadDebugger.c, and it has spawned a process, Hello World, and we've attached that in the debugger. So we have both processes debugging simultaneously, and you can see in the RTSS Task Manager that both processes are are running. So here's our, our setup. We have the source in this area. Down here are the variables, the breakpoints, threads, parallel stacks, and then up here processes, registers, and memory. So I'll start it up and we'll not you notice that we jump over to the hello world.c program because both processes are trying to run at the same time on the same processor and they're they're sharing time. Since we're showing a debugging example, we can freeze Hello World so we can, you know, debug through the thread debugger by itself and then debug through Hello World where in actuality they'd be running at the same time. So we start these and the threads will stop up, start up and we'll see some output. Both of these threads are set to have a conditional breakpoint. So when A gets to 15 and B gets to 35, the program will break. And we can look at what's happening there. As seen here, so here we are at I is equal to 15, and we have broken. So we can go and look at where we actually are in the memory by going to registers and ESP is our stack location. We can copy that, go to memory, and you'll notice that this, this value right here is F, which is hex for 15. Now if we put a breakpoint here and loop again, you'll notice that it changed to 1, 0 which is hex for 16, the nat current value of i. Now at int high, we can step in to the functions that are being called by the assignment of this variable. 
Rand, and Time. These, these buttons up here, Step Into, Step Over, and Step Out, are very useful to do so. If we step into this next command, it will open up the Rand source, which is the actual code that gets called when you call the function Rand. So we step into that, and we can then step into time afterwards, and we and we in time we step into time 64, which then even calls a assembly level code. And you can see that in the in the call stack that we're you know several functions deep, and even in parallel stacks, we have what the threads are. This is the main thread that's our controller, and here's thread A and here's thread B, and you can see what functions we're actually on. And even double clicking on A will show you where we actually entered the stack. So stepping out brings us back out of the stack and you can see this this shrinks. And now we're back at where we were when, before we called time. And let's say we didn't want to call time because we knew it, there was no bugs in that code because it's included code with C. We can step over it and it'll go to the very next command. We'll delete this breakpoint and we'll now go to when B breaks at 35, which is right now. I is equal to 35 in the B thread. And same as before, we can get the stack value. We can go to memory. And you'll notice that this value here is 23, which is hex for 35 in decimal, which is the value of I. So now we'll finish thread A and thread B, and they'll print out, and it'll let us know that they have both finished in the output. And are, we're currently now waiting for the Hello World thread to finish in, the, in our main thread. So we can go ahead and thaw the Hello World thread, and then go to the next breakpoint, which will be at I is equal to 15 in the Hello World loop. Now you can notice that this for loop is actually designed to be an infinite loop. It's inherently wrong. But this is fixable within debugging if we don't want to have to fix the code, recompile, and rerun the entire debugging process up to here. We can go to local variable i and we can edit it to be a different, a different number, like let's say 5, because that 5 is less than 10, which is the condition for breaking the loop. We change that and we hit continue. And we have exited the loop. We're next going to talk about data breakpoints, which I have included an example in this function, data break. We'll go to here, x equals 15, and we have these two variables, data and x. We're going to set a data breakpoint on the variable data by going to new breakpoint, new data breakpoint typing in ampersand data, which refers to the address of the data variable. Now this data breakpoint set, it's going to break when the value of data changes. So we have the value, the address of data right here, and I, I copied that, and we can paste it into memory, and you see that the value is CAB, which is equal to 3243 in hex. Now, if we run it, we get a breakpoint saying that data changed, and it changed to F, or 15. So, we finished out with Hello World, and we return back to the main thread, which had been waiting for Hello World to finish this entire time, and it's now recognized that the program has finished running, and, and, it, is, and it, will, it will complete. So from the example, it's clear that Visual Studio is a very powerful de debugger tool. And with RTX, it enables the functionality of debugging your real-time programs in a Visual Studio environment. Thank you for your time, and happy debugging.